In this project I'll show you how to make your own wooden angle poise lamp powered by USB and an LED bank. The main feature of this project is that all the joints are individually pivotable thanks to nuts and bolts. The main part of this project is a 24 LED super bright Piranha LED board which I found on eBay for around about £2. For the materials you're going to need 25 by 5 mm rectangular cross section wood, the LED bank, a two way switch, two strand wire and USB cable. You'll also need three bolts, nuts and washers. You also need a saw, drills and drill bits, hot glue gun and glue sticks, clamps for holding your wood and a pencil and driller for your measurements. Your project is going to work like this. The LED bank is going to be in the head of the lamp. This will be supported by two wooden arms which will be joined together using the nuts and bolts to allow for easy pivoting. These will be attached to a base at the bottom where the 5 volt USB power comes in. The pieces of wood you're going to need to cut for this project are as follows. The head's going to need three, these three different lengths. The arms are simply just four of these pieces and the base is made up of these pieces here. First up, take your four arm pieces and measure in 2.5cm in to form a square. Then join corner to corner to find the middle of the square. This will provide our place to drill. Taking a drill bit that's fractionally larger than the thread on your bolts to allow your bolts to go through easily. Take your drill and drill your way through the pieces of wood in one go, clamping the wood for security. That way you only need to measure once. If, like me, you did too many pieces because you want to do more lamp, then once again, line up one piece that's already been drilled, clamp it in place, and then drill through the new pieces, meaning that your, drill, your holes will always be in the same place. Make sure that drill is nice and vertical. Then take your 3.5cm pieces and line them up with one of the holes you've just drilled, just as so. Support it with some other pieces of scrap wood and clamp it all down. Then drill through that hole that we've been using before and it will provide the right holes for our 3.5cm supports. Grab your two 9.7cm pieces for the head and join them together using hot glue. You could also use wood glue if you wanted to allow some more time to join. Our LED board is going to sit in the middle of this piece. So then take yourself a pencil and mark out where the two contacts on the wire are going to be. Mark in a little bit as this is where we're going to be doing the drilling. You can take a drill bit just wider than the wires themselves and drill through the holes. Then taking the two wires from your LED bank, pass them through the holes, allowing your LED bank to sit flushly with a piece of wood. Secure the LED bank in place using hot glue, making sure to line it up straight. Once done that, it's time to construct the remainder of the head. Taking one of your longer pieces, hot glue just along the edge and attach it to the top of your head. Then take your shorter pieces and attach one to either side of the long piece we just joined. And attach the other side. Try to, make, try to um, smooth off or remove any excess hot glue as it will give your project a slight like smarter finish. And that's the head completed. Now take two 3.5cm pieces, thread a washer onto one of the bolts and through, onto one of the 29cm pieces arms, then the other 3.5cm and another 29 arm piece. Then secure it in place with the washer to allow for movement and then the nut on top. Tighten it to finger tightness, we'll come back with a screwdriver later. Use a hot glue gun to glue the two end pieces here on the 3.5cm pieces to your head. For added strength I added an extra piece of wood here and then glued along all the joins to add extra strength. Now that our head's completed, let's join the top arm to the lower arm. Take your two other 29cm pieces and just like with the head, add a washer to your second bolt, thread it through, add your second arm piece, so we've got a bit of a sandwich going on here, through the original arm piece, and then once again add a washer, and then add your nut, tightening to finger tightness. Then you'll just need to repeat the 3.5cm support on the far end of the other arm you've just joined. This will provide the join to our base. So, constructing our base, line up your pieces of wood like this, as this is what our base is going to look like. To do this the easiest way, apply glue all the way along one of the pieces, 
and attach it to the top of our square. Then repeat with the other piece, and this will provide the second bottom support for the underside of our base. And that's the base completed. Next up, taking our extra support we've just added there, use a pencil to mark out where you'd like it to be. I found just back from the centre was ideal. Add hot glue and, that, and glue your support in place. As you can see here, I also added an extra piece of wood on the left for added strength. Then I glued around the base, making sure not to glue the two arm pieces which need to pivot freely. Drill a hole just behind where that support is and thread your bell wire all the way up the arms and over towards where the LED head is. Apologies for the camera here, I had to do this by hand. Strip the bell wire and attach it to both the contacts of our LED board, making a note which is your positive wire and which is your negative wire. Twist them around and then you could optionally use a soldering iron to attach solder just to add some extra conductance. Hot glue your wires down and hot glue them just before where the support is here. Add a bit of a bump here, as if when you're um, pivoting your arms on your lamp, you're going to want a little bit of extra wire. So whenever you're joining them, just around the extra joints, make sure you allow extra wire, and then feed it down through the arms. I hot glued it in place here, just to tuck them away a bit. But equally, you could have fed a straw over that to hold them, make them look a little bit smarter. Lastly, feed your wire back through the base, and add hot glue to hold it in place. Next up for our switch, Find a drill bit that's just wider than your switch and drill two holes. Then finish it off using a file to get the right profile on it. And then push your switch in, joining it in place with a couple of dabs of hot glue. On the underside you see the contacts here and now we'll strip the bell wire to attach to the switch. So wiring the switch. We're going to do it like this. With our LED bank the 5 volts is going to be on the left rail, the left pin of the switch, and the ground is going to be on the right side. With a USB cable, the grounds can be attached to the right side as well, same pin, and the 5 volts can be attached to the middle pin. Then when our switch is in the left position, the 5 volt rails will be joined together, completing the circuit. With our USB cable, we're not going to need the green and white data lines so that we can cut those off, leaving just the 5 volt rail and the ground cable. Attach them like this to the switch, the 5 volts in the middle and the ground to the right, soldering them in place for extra strength and conductance. Once you've done that, Cut your bell wire off so it's just the right length, and then strip the ends. Attach the bell wire like this with the 5 volts attached to the left side of the switch and the ground attached to the right side, just where the USB cable is as well. Solder them in place for extra conductance. You can hot glue them in place afterwards to make sure the cables are just where you want them. Let's give it a quick test, and you can see that it's turned on brilliantly. It's very bright indeed, and if I turn off my workshop light, you can see that it is easily to, bright enough to work with here, even though I've turned off the main light, and this is in total darkness. So some reflections and improvements I'd do if I redid this project later. First of all, I'd definitely add these fuzzy pads underneath to protect the surface. It also lifts it up a little bit for the USB cable. Second of all, I'd use wing nuts rather than bolts. That allows you to finger tighten the screws as you need to. I'd also stretch the bell wire and remove those black and white cables for aesthetic look. Lastly, I'd attach a small piece of frosted perspex sanded down to diffuse the light a bit on the head. So there you go, your completed LED desktop lamp. Cheap, easy, and as you can see here, you can fold it away when you don't need it and tuck it away. Also use a very small amount of current. Thanks very much for checking out the video. If you enjoy this video, you may enjoy some of my other videos. Down below you can see links to the catapult video, how to make a marble labyrinth or maze, and also how to make a Chinese-inspired wooden paper lantern. Thanks very much for checking out the video, do check out the others, and I'll see you in a later video.